As you know, in recent years, it's become quite improper to parade this around in polite company. And for good reason. This is the battle flag of a country that enshrined human bondage in its constitution and then got 600,000 people killed in a war to defend said constitution. And then more recently, it became the emblem of white nationalists opposed to legal equality for black Americans. So yeah, sorry Confederate flag, but two strikes and you're out. But what if I told you about another beloved pop culture symbol that celebrates tyranny and oppression, but somehow nobody cares about? That's right, this one. T-shirts featuring a photo of Che freaking Guevara. Now I'm not gonna deny that Guevara doesn't look great in a beret and thriller jacket. All I take issue with is his sociopathic love of mass murder. What's that? You forgot that a violent revolutionary might have an unhealthy relationship with murder? Well, buckle up, hipsters. There's no other way to put this. Che Guevara really liked killing people, to the point where his diary contained exhortations to his love of smelling the blood of the enemy. The Cuban Revolution, like most revolutions, featured a lot of people getting gunned down for supporting the wrong side. During the revolution, Che is known to have personally performed summary executions of accused collaborators, including peasants thought to have supplied government troops. After the communist takeover, he was put in charge of a revolutionary kangaroo court that swiftly ordered the executions of as many as several hundred alleged counter-revolutionaries. When even those in his inner circle began to beg clemency for the condemned, Che Guevara famously dismissed due process. To send men to the firing squad, judicial proof is unnecessary. These procedures are an archaic bourgeois detail. This is a revolution, and a revolutionary must become a cold killing machine motivated by pure hate. Here's what he told the freaking United Nations in 1964. Yes, we have executed people, we are executing people, and shall continue to execute people as long as it is necessary. Another archaic bourgeois detail? Homosexuality. Both Che Guevara and Fidel Castro thought homosexuality was counter-revolutionary and enthusiastically oversaw the roundup and imprisonment of gay men. Remember the Cuban Missile Crisis when the world narrowly avoided nuclear war? That really bummed Che out. He wanted to at least level New York. We must walk the path of liberation, even if it cost millions of atomic victims, he said. He was a real ends justify the means type of guy. Nevertheless, Che gets a pass that's afforded to a lot of communist figures. You don't really see photos of Reinhard Heydrich or Saddam Hussein on dorm room walls. If you started selling shirts at the mall with Mussolini on them, you'd have a news crew on your front doorstep within the week. But you see commie mass murderers all the damn time. Mao Zedong killed at least 40 million people in engineered famines. And look at this charming Mao Etsy merch. Joseph Stalin also killed a few million in engineered famines, killed a few million more in gulags and purges, and signed the accord with this guy that started the Second World War. Have fun in your brosive Stalin shirt. The ultimate lesson here is that if you're planning to kill a few million people in the furtherance of absolute power, it's a good idea to first pretend to care about Karl Marx. But there is one bright light in all of this, and it's that every Che shirt sold is proof that guys like him lost. Che, like all communists, wanted a world in which the production of consumer goods would exclusively be in the hands of politically appointed central planners. Your local apparatchik doesn't think you should have a Milton Friedman shirt. You don't get one. You could make your own, of course, but bad things might happen to you. Fast forward to today, and Che ended up in a really tiny coffin, and most of us inherited a world where his image is now in the extremely capitalist role of being a marketing gimmick to sell crap to naive college students. It's as if every Confederate flag sold resulted in a tidy profit for the NAACP. When you wear a Che shirt, you may be ignorantly glorifying a murderous sociopath, but you are exercising the precise type of economic and personal liberty that Che hated. Viva Che, indeed.